this is Dr. Sean Fine with Brown Physicians Medicine, Division of Gastroenterology, IBD Center. And today on Clock Chronicles, I will be discussing inflammatory bowel disease and its risk for venous thromboembolisms. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. As we know, uh, venous thromboembolisms are a very important topic to address because the morbidity and mortality that are associated with it just in the general normal population alone is quite high, at least in the U.S. and around the world. Specifically to inflammatory bowel disease, we have found and learned over the past several years that this is actually a very important risk factor, and we actually classify it as an extraintestinal manifestation for patients with inflammatory bowel disease. So when we look at inflammatory bowel disease and compare it to other chronic diseases, such as diabetes or rheumatologic uh, issues, such as rheumatoid arthritis, those disease processes don't seem to confer the same risk for these venous thromboembolisms as inflammatory bowel disease. And so when we're trying to understand what actually goes into causing these clots from forming, it really seems to and appears to be related to numerous different factors. We actually learned about this risk several years ago when some studies were able to identify this unique phenomenon that was occurring in patients of the developing of clots. And it was in 2014 when a meta-analysis was performed looking at some of these prior studies, looking at the association of uh, venous thromboembolism and inflammatory bowel disease, found that patients with IBD, when they were matched similarly to patients without IBD, age and sex, that they had a threefold increased risk for the development of venous thromboembolism. So quite significant. Importantly, when patients are ongoing with a flare or suffering from an acute exacerbation of their IBD, they actually have a six-fold risk uh, for development of clot. So pretty significant to be aware of. One of the issues that we have run into, at least in the hospital setting, is that these patients with IBD with a flare would be coming in and would be presenting with things like rectal bleeding or hematochesia and patients would actually often not get placed on DVT prophylaxis because of the risk or fear that putting them on it would cause bleeding. So one of the things that we have strongly encouraged and tried to educate providers on is the importance of placing patients on this DVT prophylaxis, even if they're having episodes of bleeding during a flare, because that's when they're actually at their highest risk. And I did say that we really don't understand the exact mechanism why these clots are happening, but again, it seems to be stemming from multifocal issues. So patients with disease or flare, if they're not feeling well, are less ambulatory, they're not moving around as much. We know that active inflammation, there's certain proteins that are floating around the patient's bloodstream called cytokines, and they actually may churn on procoagulant factors or increase the risk for clotting. And one of the most important drugs that we use, uh, at least now we use a short-term, or what we call glucocorticoid steroids. And those actually have been found to actually increase the risk for clotting as well. So something that we just need to be mindful of when we're managing these patients. One of the factors that we're currently trying to address and study now for our patients with IBD is once they do come out of the hospital, we know that they're having a flare. Do we keep them on prophylaxis or DVT preventing medications to help them from developing a clot as an outpatient? And we're still kind of working through this at this point, but we do understand that this is an important factor that we at least need to be considering for some of these high-risk patients. So what about patients with inflammatory bowel disease who are hospitalized for non-IBD-related issues or for getting an outpatient elective surgery? Do they need to be on DVT prophylaxis when they're hospitalized in those issues? And the answer again is yes, because with that understanding that patients with IBD, even despite if they're not having an active flare, it does still appear that they have these heightened risk factors for being prone to developing clots. And especially after undergoing non-abdominal surgeries, such as orthopedic interventions, joint replacements, those patients, again, still need to be placed on DVT prophylaxis. So what other factors do we consider for our patients with IBD, at least in considering risk factors? So that, that's things like smoking as well. So not only do we want our patients with IBD not to be smoking for all the other health benefits, but smoking does also seem to be a heightened risk factor for the development of clots and risk for VTE. Other important notes in regards to patients' disease phenotypes, so that meaning when we're classifying patients with IBD, whether it be ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, 
There have been some studies looking at what uh, predicts heightened risk for the development of VTE in certain patient types. And what we've seen, at least through uh, studies that have been performed, is patients with Crohn's disease and fistulizing disease, that seems to be a more aggressive phenotype and pertain to a heightened risk for clot development. Also, Crohn's disease that's located to the colon seems to also be a little bit more heightened risk for the development of clots. And for ulcerative colitis, severity really does stem down to involvement of the entirety of the colon, which will heighten patients' risk for the development of clots. Thank you for allowing me to uh, partake in this and discuss this very important topic. Mm-hmm.